Hello friends, myself Professor R.S. Kognore from Bhivrabhai Savan College of Engineering, Nare, Pune. Today we will be discussing on the topic of canals, which is the syllabus for dams and hydraulic structures. We will be going through the introduction of canal, alignment of canal, classification and components of canal. So let us understand what is a canal. Canal can be defined as it is an artificial channel which is used to for construction or to carry the water from the stream or the tank or an artificial reservoir like dams. The canal can be constructed for on the basis of the purpose of purpose of use that is canal for irrigation, canal for navigation, canal for water supply, canal for power generation, canal for defense and so on. Among them the irrigation canal is constructed to carry the water up to the agriculture fields. The canal water is used to generate hydropower in the upstream and the water is carried further through the canal to, the, to, irrigate, to, to irrigate the fields under the cultivation. Those are called as irrigation canals and if the region is plain with gentle slope the canal water can be used for the purpose of transportation. Then this type of canal is called as navigation canal. These canals are constructed on the downstream of the river. Now let us understand various considerations which are made for canal alignment. So canal alignment is a very important topic which we should understand. So various factors are the area to be commanded by the canal irrigation should be maximum. The canal should be aligned in such a way that the maximum area to be cultivated should have the minimum length of the canal. So, in short, the length of the canal also should be minimum. The number of cross drainage, drainage work should be also less. Ultimately, it is going to reduce the cost of construction. The alignment of the canal should not be made on cracked strata or broken strata or soft strata. As far as possible, it should be on a rocky strata or a hard strata. The canal alignment should be set in such a way that it should involve equal balance of cutting and filling. The most important factor that the alignment of the total canal should be economical. A care is taken that as far as possible the curve should be avoided in the canal alignment. So these were the few factors which are to be considered. Next is classification of canal. Classification of canal is based on alignment of the canal as we discussed what is the alignment of the canal next it is based on the nature of the water source based on the function of the can function of the canal based on the discharge flowing through the canal next it is based on the financial output next it is based on the type of the soil on which the canal is constructed and the canal can be classified further based on the purpose of lining provided or the provision of lining if the lining is provided or it's not provided. Let us see each classification one by one. The classification first which we are going to see is classification of canal based on its alignment. It can be further subdivided as contour canals, ridge canals, side slope canals and canal networks. We will understand each sub, uh, sub classification of alignment based on alignment. First is contour canal. When the canal is aligned partially parallel to the contour of the area then it is called as contour canal. It is not possible to align the canal along the watershed or the ridge of the hilly area. In this situation Canal can be aligned as a contour canal. Next was the ridge canal. So 
when the canal is aligned along the ridge of the ridge or the natural watershed line then it is called as ridge canal large area can be brought under cultivation due to the ridge canal and thus the ridge canal has a higher command area next we should understand is side slope canal when the canal is aligned at right angle to the contour of the area then it is called as side slope canal we can see it in the image shown over there such canals neither aligned on the watershed nor in the valley but it is aligned somewhere in between the two along the slope next classification is done on the basis of nature of source or nature of water source the it can be further subdivided as permanent canal or inundation canal the permanent canals in this canal there is uh, or we can classify it as or we can say that these canals are perennial or these canals have a perennial supply of water from the sources and inundation canal in this canal the water at the the water is available at the time of floods only when the water level in the river rises above the average or above the average level so next classification is based on the function of the canal it can be further divided as feeder canal or carrier canal to understand feeder canal it is nothing but a constructed canal only and only for the purpose of supplying water to the an another canal and carrier canal these canals serve both the purposes they supply the water directly to the irrigation fields as well as they supply water to the other canals next classification is based on the discharge or the discharge carrying capacity we can say so it is main canal branch canal major distributaries minor distributaries and fill canals so let us understand each canal in detail first is the main canal it is a large capacity canal which gets the supply of water directly from the river or from the reservoir it's the main canal next is the branch canal this is also called as these canals are also called as called as branches these are further the subdivided as right branch canal or left branch canal depending on the direction whichever side it is available these are constructed on both the sides of the main canal so right canal or left canal they are generally used to collect the water from the main canal and supply it to the major or minor distributaries in case of small canals they are also used to provide the water directly to the field the discharge carrying capacity is nearly about 5 cubic next is major distributaries these distributaries receive water either from the main canal or from the branch canal these canal discharges water in between 0.15 cubic to 5 cubic they are used to supply water from the outlet to the agriculture fields directly so or sometimes the major distributaries also supply water to the minor distributaries next is what we are going to see is minor distributaries they get the water supply either from the major distributaries or from the branch distributaries or branch canals these canals have a carrying capacity or discharge carrying capacity which is going to be less than 0.25 cubic they supply water to the agriculture fields directly and the field canals they are also called as water course water sources or water courses they collect the water from the outlet of the major or minor or from the branch and carry water directly to the agriculture field these field canals are 
constructed, controlled, and maintained by the actual user of the water. That are those are nothing but the fa farmers or the owners of the field. Next classification is based on the soil on which the canal is to be constructed. That is alluvial canal or and non alluvial canal. Alluvial canal, if we see, these canals are constructed on an alluvial soil which have a very high production and are very efficient for the farmers. So, canals are naturally giving a more profit over here. And non alluvial canals are the canals which are constructed on non alluvial soils like black cotton soil or red soil which do not have that high yield. So, the production capacity from these canals is very less. The next classification which we are going to see and which is very important is based on the provision of lining. Provision of lining, it is class, can be classified as lined canal or unlined canal. If we see what is lined canal, then these canals are not uh, lined with an impervious material the velocity of this canal is always kept or the velocity of these canal is always kept greater and the cross-sectional area is reduced in this case and in case of unlined canal these canals are, are made up of natural soils and not lined with an impervious material and therefore a care is taken that the velocity of this canal is kept very low. If the velocity increases, the banks can be eroded. eroded. So, uh, the unlined canals are usually having a very low velocity. Hope I have understood what are the classifications of the canal. Next, we are going to see the components of the canal system. The components of the canal system are whatever we have studied in case of the canal classification based on the discharge. So, the same canal components which we are going to see or we can say these are the canal distribution systems. So, the main canal, branches, major distributaries, field channels, headworks and minor distributaries. So, these are nothing but the components of the canal system and we should understand we have discussed each and every component in detail of it. What is a main canal? What is a branch canal? What is a major distributary? So, this image will give us a brief idea about it. The first upper, over, uh, upper two lines represent the river flowing through it. A canal is pass through it on which that is represented as a main canal it is branched on one of the side so it may be a right canal that is branched next that is sub branched as a distributary next a minor canal and next the field canal which directly convey goes or which dis directly distributes water to the field this is the complete canal distribution system which we should understand properly. Hope students you have understood the concept of canal, the classification of canal and the canal distribution system. Thank you.